Yes, any fasting is good. The effects of fasting don't only last that one day. The effect of that fasting will last you days and days and days to come. So even a one-day fast has a profound effect on your physiology that's going to last for days. Folks, don't underestimate this. So don't think it's a failure. Oh, my God, Doc said, you know, fast, and I only fasted one day a week. So what? It's okay. That's good to do. Your body should be stressed. It's called homesis. What is the definition of homesis? Homesis is a type of physiology that puts a stress on your body. And when it puts that stress, it changes your, your, your entire expression, your genetic expression, so you become healthier and stronger. If your insulin levels were high and your sugar levels dropped, you got functional hypoglycemia, so you're a pre-diabetic. So therefore, your, your sugar's running too low. Why did they drop? Because you ate too much carb. So you, you brought too much insulin into your bloodstream, and therefore, two hours later, you crashed. So when, when you eat the sugar, it goes to the pleasure center in the brain. It goes straight to the dopamine receptors, and it is addictive. And the way to overcome it is what I'm saying here. You just have to pull yourself through it. Just make sure you're not becoming hypoglycemic, but you've got to have the, the, the willpower not to, not to cave in and, and eat sugar. You must have persistently low insulin levels. You have to bring that down. You've got to get it down. When your insulin response is now normal, I can say hormonally modified person, you have now normalized. So now when that person goes out and maybe once in a while has a high-carb meal, he's not going to produce that massive amount of insulin again because he's insulin sensitive. So the goal here in the diet that I'm telling everybody to do is to restore insulin sensitivity. Not that I'm telling you that for the rest of your life, you're only going to have one meal a day and you're going to suffer. No, that's not the point. The point is through the fasting program, you will lose weight, regain your sensitivity, which can be tested with another five hour test. You need to really reduce your glycemic load and the amount of carbs in your diet, then your insulin response will not be so mm -hmm. sharp and so high, then you won't get the reactive hypoglycemia down the road. It depends on your goal. So in a patient who's terribly overweight, I'm going to encourage you to do it as often as you possibly can and how comfortable you feel with it. But if you're just doing it for health reasons, you're just doing it because you're not overweight, your insulin's okay, your sugars are okay, but you just want to remain healthy, and that's why you want to keep your insulin sensitivity, then my advice is to do it twice a week. Because the day after you fasted, your insulin sensitivity is going to be there. So even you diabetics who fast, the next day, whatever you're going to eat, your insulin levels are actually going to drop with the same meal. Why? Than before. Why? Because you're more insulin sensitive. And that sensitivity seems to stay for two to three days. And that's why two to three days a week, you should do the once a day fast. And I think that'll be very, very healthy for health maintenance. But if you're overweight and you want to do it for that, well, then you do it every day till your weight comes down, till your waist comes down, till, till you want to stop. And if you really want to know how well you're really doing, then you do your blood tests. You know, you do your HDL, your triglycerides, you do a five-hour insulin test, and now it's all normalized. Well, now you've hormonally corrected yourself. So many vegans and vegetarians think that they're on a very healthy diet, when actually they're not, because they are eating too much carbohydrates. If you want to know whether you're in trouble with eating too much carbs or not, then there's simple things you can do. One is, of course, you do the insulin test that I've recommended, and you look at your HDL and your triglyceride ratio, and look at your weight, and that, then you'll know whether you're eating too much carbs or not. So stay away from sugar still, stay away from fructose, eat complex carbohydrates, no refined flour, even though you're a vegan. Don't eat refined stuff. Eat more of the rough stuff, and you'll be much healthier. Polyunsaturated fats, cut those out from your diet. The old dictum was polyunsaturated fats are good for you, saturated fats are bad for you. You've been taught that. You've heard that for all these years. Well, the answer is wrong. No, it's the polyunsaturated fats, especially in the large amounts that we consume today, that are bad for you. See, polyunsaturated fats only came about on the scene at the turn of the century, especially with things like cottonseed oil, when they didn't know what to do with all those seeds, and they started extracting through industrial processes the oil. Then we started feeding that to the people. And uh, what we've found now is that it actually causes inflammation in the body, or too much omega-6. 
the ratio of omega-6, which is pro-inflammatory, to omega-3 is way off the charts if you look at the contents of our foods from just 50 years ago also. Polyunsaturated fats get into your lining of each cell membrane and alters the way the cell membrane functions. And it is prone to oxidation because it's unsaturated. So the bonds, chemical bonds that are available for interaction. Because of that, this interaction and oxidation process occurs on your cells. Your cells become dysfunctional. They can't work normally. Saturated fats are infinitely preferable. There needs to be a clarification. Fats are not just fats. There's trans fats, which are now, of course, banned. And nobody should eat trans fats. Polyunsaturated fats are a problem. Saturated fats have been with us for thousands of years. And there was no evidence of coronary artery disease in most civilizations before the turn of the century. So these oils are extracted from seeds. And they call them vegetable oils. Not from vegetables. They're from seeds. So whether it's soy oil or whether it's um, uh, cottonseed oil or whether it's groundnut oil, maize oil, or corn oil, or soybean oil, uh, even canola oil. These are all manufactured oils full of omega-6. And this must be avoided. Whenever we're cooking, we should not use this oil. Use butter. Use butter wherever you can. We have become a society where we go to the doctor and say, fix me. If you just want to be healthy, eat once a day. If we look back in history, we've been fasting all along. The prevailing wisdom is that when you fast, oh, I'm gonna get sleepy, I'm gonna get tired, I need energy. And you, there's energy bars, there's those little drinks, energy drinks. And when you drink that, you're supposed to get energy. And it's not true. When you go and take a candy or an energy bar, you suddenly feel great. That's because you're a junkie. A lot of our behavior is incongruent to our physiology. Our brain has interfered. Our mind has interfered with our body and we stopped listening to our body. Why did we stop listening to the body? Because you were told to stop listening to your body. By who were you told? The press, the media, people around you, maybe your parents, maybe your friends, that you got to eat five times a day. This knowledge is totally false. You don't need to have that calorie input all the time. Oh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It's not. The most nutritious meal of the day is the meal that you have. Our body is made to fast and is made to feast. Because if there was no food around, and if your sugar just went down, 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 your energy level went down, 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 you'll be dead in 24 hours because nature doesn't give you any way to come back. But no, that does not happen to you. Fasting doesn't kill people. We are used to fasting and we do it. And when you're sick, you fast, don't you? When you have the flu, you don't eat. There's a wisdom in that. And that wisdom is the physiology. When you don't eat, nature has put into you a biochemistry. You stop eating. In the first 12 hours, your body's gonna say, hmm, no food coming out. It's gonna wipe up all the glycogen that is in your liver and in your muscles. That's a normal process. It's gonna use glycogen. So your sugar level or your glucose level will be maintained. What about protein? You've got plenty of protein in your body. What about vitamins? You've got at least a month's worth of vitamins in your body. What about energy? How much fat do I have? So for the first 12 hours, I'm not going to use the fat. I'm going to use up my glycogen stores. How am I going to feel? I'm going to feel okay unless I'm a junkie. You can fast for seven days. Your blood sugar will come down, but you will not become hypoglycemic and have an attack. After 12 hours, what happens? You get gluconeogenesis. That means new glucose is being made. Where does that glucose come from that comes into the bloodstream? Where does it come from? Comes from protein. But it's not the protein in the muscles. Protein is always being turned over in your body. The only way fat can come into utilization is the insulin levels must drop. So the insulin levels are now low because you're not eating. When your insulin level is high, you store energy. When your insulin levels are low, you pull energy out of the fats. So now through the hormonal action of hormone sensitive lipase and the action of LPL, what happens? The fat stores open up. So the fats start being devoured. The fat gets converted to triglycerides and fatty acids. 
The fatty acids flood the bloodstream. You can't utilize fatty acids, so they go to your liver. And in the liver, your fatty acids get converted to ketones. There's two ketones, beta-hydroxybutyric acid and acetic acid. These two ketones now go up. Ketones can be utilized by every cell of your body, including your brain. After a seven day fast, up to 70% of the energy utilization of the brain is through ketones. And the brain likes it. The fats, the sugar, the weight, the fasting, it's all insulin. It's all about insulin. You have to drop your insulin level. It makes you better, it makes your brain better. What else does a fasting do? Growth hormone. Do you know how much growth hormone costs? A small 0.1 injection is about $400. A two day fast produced a 2,000% increase in your growth hormone production in a man and 1,300 in a woman. You wanna stay younger? You need growth hormone. But the best way to give yourself growth hormone is do one fast. So the body says, I need energy. Recycle, I need to recycle. And this has all been documented over and over again. But there's no industry that's gonna support me because there's no financial gain if you get better and younger and live longer. Because there's no one there to make money out of. No one makes money when you fast, they lose money. And everyone thinks that, oh, fasting is just fasting, it's starvation, it's no good. But there's so much science behind this. You gotta prepare yourself mentally, you gotta prepare yourself physically, and you gotta have water so that you don't get dehydrated. If you just wanna be healthy, eat once a day. At the most, twice a day in a six to eight hour window period. When you are in a fasting state, they mobilize a bunch of enzymes or proteins called the SIRT1 molecules, S-I-R-T-1 molecules. They go up in your body. So when the SIRT is up, it binds with acetyl groups on your histones, which are on your DNA. You have your full set of DNA of which you only express a fraction, less than 1%. It's exciting because if you know the knowledge behind this, you'll get excited about it and you'll want to do it. Now you know that the body actually is very intelligent. What you eat immediately starts changing your genetic expression. Different diets turn these genes on and off. Did you ever think about that? It's very empowering to know that. If you want to simply replicate the Paleolithic way, Eat once a day or twice a day only. Do it in a time-restricted fashion. All of you can do it.